Hello guys and welcome to Python Programming Tutorials by Amul's Academy. Today in this tutorial we are discussing about a pattern program. But this pattern program is quite different from the previous pattern program. Because today here we are printing a string in right triangle shape. That is nothing but first we will ask the user to enter a string. Uh, for example if you enter string as python then this is the input then we'll get the output like this first line we'll get p next p y next p y and t next p y t h next p y t h o next p y t h o n okay so here we can see we are printing strings in the right triangle shape you can see this is in the right triangle shape so today in this tutorial we are discussing about this pattern program so let's get started with the program okay first in the python file we'll ask the user to enter the string so to take the input from the user i'll use input function here and to store whatever the input entered by the user i'll take one variable so my variable name will be string okay this is my variable and here I'll use input function and inside this I'll write a message it is enter the string okay so this message will display on the output screen as I said in the previous pattern programs this input function will take input as the string value and here we want string value so no need to change this input okay next here I want to find out the length of the string that is I want to know how many characters are present in the entered string and here I'll take one variable called length and I'll store the length of that string in this variable here I use length function so it will find out how many characters are present in this string so I use length of string and this result will be stored in this variable length for example if you enter this string as python it contains p y t h o n six character right so length of that string is six so that length will be stored in this variable six will be stored in this variable here we are using length function because in our output number of rows is equal to the length of the string for example okay this is the entered input right here we can see one two three four five six okay there are six characters in our input and here we can see one two three four five six there are six rows in the output here the length of the input is equal to the number of rows that's why here i find out the length of this string so that length will be the our number of rows so our output contains this number of rows okay so next so this is our output here we can see we want to print these characters in different row and column here also we are using the nested for loop that is for loop within the for loop first we'll write the for loop for row within that we'll write the for loop for column that's because here we are printing this character like this at row 0 we'll check for the column 0 and we'll print this character after that we'll go to the row 1 and we'll check for column 0 column 1 we'll print this character that is row 1 column 0 row 1 column 1 next again we'll go to the row 2 and we'll check for column 0 column 1 column 2 okay so first we need to write the for loop for row after that inside that we'll write the for loop for column so we are writing for loop for row so for and here i'll take my variable name as row in range function here i'm using range function and in the range function i need to mention the start and end that is how many rows you want as i said the length of the string will be the number of rows in our output so i'll take row from zero so i'll take zero to length so 
as i said if i enter my string as python it contains six characters so length will be six so range will become zero to six so it will give output as zero one two three four five okay here we can see this is the output for python which contains six characters so row will be zero one two three four and five okay so we wrote range like this next colon and inside this we'll write the for loop for column so for call so call is my variable name and it is the short form for column in range okay here also we are using range function and i need to mention the start and end here that is how many columns we want okay here we can see at row 0 i want one column at row 1 i want two column at row 2 i want three column at row 3 i want four column that is 1 2 3 4 and row 4 i want 1 2 3 4 5 column and row 5 i want six column so here i'll mention my range as 0 to row plus 1 that is when row value is 0 control goes to the for loop so here range will become 0 to row plus 1 here row value is 0 so 0 to 1 so it will give output as 0 so we'll get one column there right that's nothing but okay when row value is 0 okay here the column range is nothing but range of row plus 1 okay so here row value is 0 so range will be become 1 that is nothing but 0 to 1 so it will give output as 0 so we'll get one column here right at row 0 we'll get one column that is this column 0 at row 1 we'll get column 0 and column 1 at row 2 we'll get column 0 column 1 column 2 okay that's why we need to mention the range like this and inside this i'll use print function okay now what you want to print i want to print the character of that string right so i'll mention string of okay so here i want to print the character of string so here i mention string of call here call is the index and next end is equal to empty string Okay, this is because in the print function by default end value will be slash n that is new line but here we don't want that after printing one character i want next character immediately after that not in the new line that's why here i change the end value to empty string next here in the first for loop i'll use print function that is this for loop for loop for row I use this print function for new line that is after each row I want new line here we can see after printing one row I want to go to the next line to print the characters in the row one okay after each row I want new line that's why here we mentioned this print function okay so now we are done with our code so we need to save this and run this okay so enter this string I'll enter string as python and here we can see the output so I'm entering another string and here we can see the output and here we use python 3.5 so if you are using python 2 and then you try this code you may get error because in the python 3 print is a function but in python 2 print is not a function so you may get error there so if you are using python 2 then you need to write code like this okay here string and here you can use input function but in the python 2 input function won't take uh, string as the default value okay but if you want it to take string as the default value then you can use raw input but in python 3 input function will take input as the string value by default it will take that as string value but here in the python 2 input function won't treat that as the string value okay there is a difference between python 2 and python 3 
that's why here i use raw input here in the python 2 raw input will take input as the string value by default it will treat that as the string value okay that's why i mentioned raw input here and this is same i took one variable called length and i need to find out the length of the string and this for loop is same and this for loop is also same here as i said print is not a function here it is just a statement that's why we need to write like this and here we can see instead of end we need to use comma at the end of the statement and this print is for new line so now i need to save this and run this so you can see we are using python 2.7 here i want to enter my string so my string will be python and here we can see the output okay so this is about how we can print string in the right triangle shape and some may think why we are learning this pattern programs right it's because these are the python example programs and if you are learning any programming language to understand the concept better you need to practice many programs okay and if you are new to python and now you are learning python programming then try to write these simple programs because of this you will get to know how to use nested for loops if else conditional statement logical or logical ands and how to use input functions so that's it for now thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'll meet you in next class till then take care